Now, you all know me by now as the guy who says what's on his mind, whether it's politically correct or not, who's unapologetic, but yet I've got love for everybody out there, and I don't wish anybody any harm. Well, today we're going to take a slight detour from the whole Gandhi of Gab approach, and we're going to talk a little bit about the butt whoopings out there, who's handing them out, and who needs to get them. See, the political conversation at large in vibrant swaths of urban acreage in this country has become so toxic of late that it has bred in the pool of shared rhetoric, a dangerous, violent animus between and among what might otherwise be sane and rational people. See, the very foundational notion that we as a people who possess the freedom of speech and ideas can and should disagree with each other peacefully so as to continue to build that more perfect union is not only eroding in these areas, but is being actively dug out by fools with little toy shovels. Take, for example, Portland, Oregon, one of the bigger and brighter dumpster fires in America today. A couple of weeks ago, Members of the delightful group known as Antifa decided that it would be a great idea to beat the crap out of a journalist named Andy No. After which they threw milkshakes at him, shot him with silly string, bounced things off his head, and cussed him up a blue streak. Now we're talking about a guy who's maybe 100 pounds soaking wet and who's shorter than Bernie Sanders' list of good ideas. And these people felt the need to kick his ass and scream at him. So this anti-fascist group of people who act suspiciously and ironically like fascists is composed of mask-wearing, basement-dwelling, video game-playing, deodorant-refusing, MSNBC-watching, mama bring my meatloaf because they can't even make mac and cheese from a box, spoil brats when these bridge trolls, minus their charm, aren't busy living under squatters' rights on the internet. They're taken to the streets like messed-up white trash superheroes and delivering social justice with baseball bats and bike locks. The overwhelming majority of these deadbeat crowbar-wielding doofuses don't have the upper body strength necessary to bench press a box of wheat thins, but hey! Anybody's going to crumple if you pop them in the nads with a Louisville Slugger, and that's exactly what they do. Now, what really chaps my hide the most is the fact that they wear masks, like little whiny, cowardly bullies that they are. They take care to make sure you can't identify them. Why? Because they aren't actually standing up for anything. They don't believe in anything. If that were the case, I could at least respect them a little bit, even if I didn't agree with them. But no, what they're actually doing is participating in a social game, one in which everyone but the victim gets a participation trophy at the end in the form of self-righteous sense of accomplishment and bragging rights for the next time they all meet up to drink lattes and paint Orange Man bad on each other's toenails. Tell you what, Antifa, next time you decide you want to beat up on a conservative, why don't you fly your happy asses down here to Texas and we'll show you a whole new way in place you can put that bike lock sideways look we got creative ways of beating butts down here and you're gonna love them better yet why don't you just grow up move out of your parents basement and get a darn job and finally absorb the most basic lesson when it comes to free speech it's free for everybody folks let's get rid of this asinine notion that reckless and silly violence is a solution to all the disagreements we have as a people there's too much progress to be made too much freedom to enjoy and spread around for us to be pulling nonsense like this i love y'all even you antifa but seriously, I'll beat your butt like your mama failed to do. I love y'all. God bless. Here's a Facebook boat. Come on, Willie. Let's go get something to eat.